Hey guys, welcome to part two of my interview with Dylan Wolf, where we dive deeper into her college experience, where she continued to experience challenges with her ACL. And Dylan opens up about how this really starts to affect her health mentally. Now we're up to my senior year, your freshman year, and you're at AU and you're all excited because it's finally you're in college. Talk about the fun stuff going into college. Like, what did you enjoy just about that freshman year leading up to everything? Oh my gosh. I are so there were nine of us in our recruiting class. So there are nine incoming freshmen. So, of course, I was a little bit nervous you know, got to find my place on the team. What kind of freshman do I want to be like that sort of thing? Um, I tried to be the chill one. I don't know if I came off like that. Oh, you definitely did. We're like, she's like (laughs) way too cool for us. (laughs) Like I feel awkward and I'm the senior. (laughs) I'm like, am I doing too much? Does she think I'm weird? Oh God. (laughs) Our freshman year, I think it was just so fun. I think our group of girls was so different but was just so like funny and just goofy and I think that was something I was really nervous about going into college was like I hope I vibe with these girls Mm -hmm. and I never got the chance to do an official visit with people on campus Uh so when I went on my official visit I was just meeting the coaches and I just had to take their word for it that the team had a good, had good chemistry. Like any coach could tell you, yeah, we all get along. And then you hear like horror stories of like assholes on the team. Right. And so I was really, really relieved that this was like the group of girls we had. Cause even like upperclassmen, I was like, everyone's so cool and nice and inviting. So. And we needed that because our record was trash so (laughs) I think it really helped that we all had like just really honestly good personalities that we could laugh about the shit we were going through and we haven't even gotten to like the rehab part of college but you know like how did having your such a close-knit class around you like help you yeah it really helped and I think it was tough because they never saw the process that I went through so like trying to like explain it is really hard and try to explain the severity because part of me was like I promise I went through all this stuff and that's why I'm not as good as maybe I really am. Dara who was also in my class she had torn her ACL in high school as well at the same time as me. Mm -hmm. She was kind of going through a recovery process too so we were able to kind of bond over that. I, I was still really just like excited to be a freshman. I was so happy. I think the soccer part of it was just impossible Mm -hmm. and I think as with functioning legs it's impossible Mm -hmm. and that's just what division one sports are it's Mm -hmm. just these two days and these fitness tests and let I want to go to the day when you pass the fitness test right your freshman year so what what did that feel like yeah so we were running the man U. I mean I literally literally pissed my pants because I body was like on overload and I think you're like numb from the waist down (laughs) yeah blacked out don't remember it and I remember the only thing I do remember is that the coaches miscounted yeah they like lost track (laughs) everyone's like what so I thought we thought we were done and they're like nope one more till you pass we're like no we promise we're counting like vomiting yeah So I ended up passing and that was a huge relief, but I couldn't walk the next day. So I think that's what my body was just like, what are you doing to yourself right now? Really what my preseason was, my preseason experience was just pain management. Mm -hmm. And it hurt so bad and I don't even know how to explain it, but it's just like the constant feeling of like little like the very basic level things just being impossible and I think that's even hard for people that are like their legs are fine and you're perfectly healthy it's just the pure exhaustion and then for me it was compounded on to that one joint what were were you telling yourself through all of this I was telling myself like okay, like if this is what it takes, like it's just going to get better. Like you're really fresh into being, maybe it's because you're out of shape or, you know, maybe it's 
you're just, you need a, a little bit more to heal, but it'll come back like that sort of thing. And I was listening to my trainers and they're like, yeah, like you feel like feeling my leg, like you feel stable, like everything should be okay. And, um, they're like, you've been, your, you know, your knee's been through a lot. It's not really that surprising that it hurts. So I'm like, okay, this is just like what I'm going to have to deal with. I had this massive knee brace that I had to play with like for contact, which is super uncomfortable. But at that point I was like, you know, I, I'm going to do whatever I can. And I don't know if that was like, I, the anxiety levels were absurd. I was like, every little mistake, I was like, I'm the worst soccer player I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm literally horrible. My yeah. confidence was down here. Yeah. But I mean, the coaches had nice things to say about me and like, so do my teammates and at least my like level of play. So I was like, okay, I can keep up. Mm -hmm. I can keep up at least. So, um, we ended up doing our non-conference games. Um, Freaking played against um, Tennessee. I was like, why is that my first game coming back? That was my last game. That was my <laughs> good times. Yeah, good times. I'm like, why are we going up against a six foot three? Like, Oh, yeah. Know, I can good. forever say that my last Division One college soccer play was against an Australian Olympian who literally took me out. <laughs> so <I'm> like, <laughs> that's one for the books. Yeah. Okay, so but you got to go in a game. Let's ignore my really shitty story, too. But you got to play in a game. What What were your emotions? The coaches had said, like, you know what, we might throw you in for a few minutes to see how you do, because um, I for sure couldn't go in for a full half. There's no way. Mm -hmm. And so they pulled me off the bench and like, all right, John, you're going in. And like, it was just pure joy because it was the first real game I had, I had ever played in after right. everything. So I think I was just so excited and like my adrenaline was going. There was actually a crowd at that game. So I was like, so it was more fun. Tennessee people than America. Yeah. <laughs> and I, they put me up top and I felt comfortable. Like I felt comfortable in the way that, like, I felt like I commu could communicate with other people on the field. And like, I knew which runs I should make. And maybe my touch wasn't very good, but like, I felt like I was just, you know, I was back in it. So from that first game back, I like gradually, they started playing me a little bit more minutes um, per half. And then the final game that I ended up playing with AU was against Monmouth, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think I ended up playing like a total of like 45 minutes. Yeah. So my body was like shot. Like I was gassed. I, my knee felt so unstable and I didn't know if it was just from the fatigue, but I was busting ass I was you know doing everything that I could and I remember after that game I went to my trainer I was like something's wrong like there's no way that I should be feeling like this from there they did my MRI I really didn't even know what to expect and I had known what kind of the MRI was supposed to look like from my first so even me looking at my results with the doctor I was like what am I looking at what am I looking at like it didn't make sense. And so he was like, yeah, your ACL is just not there. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> We're like, how is that possible? And he was like, you know, it could be a combination of the infection and then returning to play and all of that trauma just kind of like dissolved it. And it never fully healed from the infection. So I'm like, how the, how did I get cleared? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, how did I get cleared? And what it came down to was basically I felt really stable. Like I felt nothing was, you know, slipping around, sliding around in there um, on a manual test. Um, what it came down to was I had a lot of knee stability because of all of the scar tissue. So it was just so like rough in there that it was like holding everything together. Um, but just like internally, it was just like my, my knees just banging into each other. You were literally yeah. playing on like bone to bone basically, right? Yeah. Cause at that point, my cartilage from all of the training and the preseason and the two days, like my cartilage, cartilage was like whittled down to nothing. So I had no support, no cushion in my joint. 
I was like, oh, okay, yep, this makes sense. This literally makes sense. I mean, this is a whole nother issue too, but it's like, you think you feel one way, but then you have professionals telling you you're okay. And of course, that's all you've been wanting to hear is you're okay. So how do you balance like trying, like trusting a professional who's gone to school for this versus just how you like feel when you just know something's off? How did you juggle that? I think, I think it was really hard because this was something that neither me or any of the profession professionals I'd worked with had ever seen or dealt with before. Um, so they didn't necessarily know what was right or normal. And I was like, okay, well, if you don't know, I'm not going to know. Yeah. Um, so when they were saying like, you know, it should be okay. You should be fine. I'm like, okay, I'm fine. Like yeah. whatever. I have a really high pain tolerance. So I was like, okay, when it really, really, really hurts, I'll say something. And then that's when I got the MRI. Mm-hmm. So at that point I was like, okay, so what's next? And like we can do an ACL reconstruction again. Um, and then we'll see what we can do about the scar tissue as well. See if we can break some of that down. Um, so I ended up going in for my fifth surgery, second reconstruction. Um, and this was your yeah, freshman fall. year still of college. Yeah. Freshman year fall, probably, I think it was October. October 11th. Yeah. Of my freshman year. So I, it was drastically, drastically different than anything I had experienced when I was at home rehabbing. Mm -hmm. But part of me was like, oh, this is, you know, this is just because it's a higher level and, you know, more competitive, they're going to be harder on me in the training room. And what it came down to was, you know, that first day I get out of surgery, should I really be doing squats? You know, no crutches, walk on it, suck it up. Before I'm in a wheelchair for a month. And so, of course, that whole time I was so paranoid because like, what if something goes wrong again? This, you know, so I'm taking everything that my trainers are saying to the T. I'm doing every single thing that they say. But in my back of my head, I was like, is this like, I've never seen this before. Why am I doing this? But I'm like, okay, you know what they say? That's fine. I'm going to do it. Um, and over the course of my recovery, I don't think I had ever been so low. Mm-hmm. At least from my, because my past recoveries, I was like still kind of hanging on to hope and I was excited. But I think this one was a lot tougher because of the psychological and like physical demand from the training room and my, in the program, because I'm like so much pressure is on me to come back at to, at a certain time so I can play and, you know, make a difference on the team. Otherwise, like I don't exist to them. Our rehab itself would take about three hours to get through because you're doing probably 20 exercises and then a hundred reps of each exercise for both legs. So it just took up all of my time. I didn't have a social life, which is kind of hard as a freshman. Um, and then you're also adding on actually coming to the locker room for practice and having to sit and watch practice, which is just a, an emotional, psychological, you know, hardship to go through because that was something I didn't have to go through with the other one either. I didn't go to practice. Um, after when I was in high school, I went through to a couple games, but they're like, it doesn't make sense. Why would you come like get better, get better so you can come back. But this was different. It was like, no, you still have the responsibility to get to the locker room on time and, you know, watch practice, watch lift. And then you need to go do your responsibility as a recovering athlete to go finish your rehab at whatever time you can. It was a lot as a freshman. Yeah. I mean, I just remember seeing that from the outside and uh, another aspect of this story was that how many people from the soccer team were doing this and if it was coincidence or not, but how many, how many girls were, had torn ACLs at the same time? Five. Five. Five other, so it was me and then five other girls. And then one eventually had two torn (laughs) both different legs simultaneously torn ACLs yeah so while that's depressing to have that like literally what was the hab girls Mm -hmm. what did that mean to you to have all of them going through all that 
yeah, I think it was the first time that I felt like some, somebody like understood the pain that I felt. I think that was just like a huge relief because we would talk to each other about like how absurd what we, what we were doing was, you know, and I think if I was alone, I would have just, I would have been alone. And I think I was able to build such strong friendships from that because it was girls on the team, whatever age, I probably wouldn't have gotten as close with them had it, had we not been in rehab three hours a day together. We had this just like little bit of a closer bond because we could joke about how shitty our knees were. It was tough, but it was really, really nice to have them there too and to be going through it. Because every time we hit a milestone, like we were there to support each other and cheer each other on. Um, whereas somebody who wasn't going through it at the time wouldn't know what that meant mm -hmm. for them. When you were, when we were coming back from our surgeries, we were lifting four weeks out. We started lifting again. Um, and I had never done um, Olympic lifting in high school. So this is also new for me too. Um, but I actually took, really took to it and I was actually pretty good. Um, and at that point I was rehabbing every day. So I was really strong. Um, and they, it got to the point. So I was doing the same lifts as the team. So it's, you know, back squat, front squat, um, cleaning, all of that stuff. And um, it, it was the day that we we're supposed to max out. And my strength and conditioning coach was like, okay, Dylan, like this is your weight. This is what you're doing. And I was doing a back squat. And I just, I got to the bottom of it. And I had a spotter, but at that point, I wasn't about to drop this like weight off behind me if I couldn't do it. That's just like not how it works. When you have somebody right there watching you telling you you have to do this, like you're gonna do it, um, no matter how badly it hurts. So I get to the bottom of the squat and I'm freaking out. I was like, I don't know if I can get back up. Um, so I ended up just shooting back up and um my leg just went fully straight and then buckled on from buckled from under me and it went to the side and i knew literally within that moment i was like something is wrong and nobody believed me nobody believed me and it took me over a week for them to say okay we'll get you an mri because you're so annoying <laughs> with your track record of knee issues that would not why would that not be the first thing to come to come to mind yeah and you know they did the manual check they're like it feels fine and i'm like something's not right i promise you i promise you you're like i hold the world record for acl tears i think i know what it feels like yeah and so finally got my mri lo and behold it was torn um so then at that point i'm like okay it, what am i doing um because before then i was still get, i was getting integrated into practice like I was doing everything I could except with, you know, without contact. So I really had that taste of soccer again. Mm -hmm. And I was just so pumped. But then for that to just happen so quickly with my body already so fatigued from these months of rehabbing and the surgeries before, I'm like, is this really good for me at this point? Um, so I really took that summer to kind of explore that. And I, saw a bunch of doctors and you know the consensus was like Dylan you your knees are have so much your one knee the amount of trauma that it's gone through you you could try to play but at the end of the day you're gonna hurt yourself you're gonna hurt yourself or you're gonna need a knee replacement you're gonna be in pain the whole time and there's nothing that you can do to to do anything about it so like did I really want to remember soccer in pain like no yeah. and I could have you know and that's that was a big part of it too was like I felt so weak for like giving up when I literally had doctors saying like you should not be playing you could always try like no one's going to tell you no but as a doctor I would not let my daughter play you know and I think that was like what it came down to yeah. So was this something that this idea had kind of been creeping into your head, but it took someone from the outside to tell you maybe you need to call it quits or were you just, that wasn't even an option in your head. Like, I'm just going to keep going. I was thinking like, 
I need somebody to tell me what's going on and why does this keep happening and why, like, why me? And part of me was, part of me had a, had a clue that I probably shouldn't be playing. But the other part of me wanted to have a doctor say, you're perfectly fine. Like, this is just another tear. You'll be, you'll be fine when you come back. Yeah. That's like what I wanted to hear. But when I didn't hear that, I was like, okay, this is what I thought was probably going to happen. And I had to start accepting it. And I think that this is when, when, you know, shit hits the fan. So. All right, guys, be sure to check out episode three, where Dylan continues to share how this major life decision of ending her soccer career really took a toll on her mental health. But she also shares how all of these experiences have really empowered her to do the work that she does today.